Wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think that answers a lot of the questions. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're looking at plumbata again. So these Roman war darts used by skirmishers, I've now found out, not the legionaries themselves. You know, they're very interesting things, but they have modern parallels. And that is lawn darts are over in the States, as you know them, jarts. Now I have managed to buy some of those over here. And I've now engaged my 1970s campus friends. <coughs> and we're gonna do an unboxing video that the world has never seen before. Plumbata versus lawn darts. Now these are not just any lawn darts, they are English lawn darts. So if you're gonna injure your children, apparently and allegedly, do it patriotically. So this is our box of English lawn darts here, which I bought on eBay for 15 pounds or something, made by the Victoy Company. 1969 was a year of manufacture. But what I particularly love about it is it actually has a health and safety warning on the back. And for 1969, that is quite extraordinary. Brian, could you open up the box for us? And here we have our lawn darts. All four of them, nearly mint condition. You have a counterweight here, a thin, I would guess, polyethylene plastic set of veins, and a quarter inch steel spike here, which has actually been blunted. But let's face it, any self-respecting adolescent boy is gonna sharpen that up, and we're gonna try that later, because I would have done. We're gonna run a few trials now, which are patently ridiculous, really, against weapons of war versus, well, toys. Thank you very much, Terry. But it's a really serious thing, because these were apparently very dangerous. So the question is, how dangerous were they? Because they got pulled from sale in all sorts of countries. America, you can't even buy them, not even on the second hand market. So first one is going to be for accuracy at short distance. So Terry, take it away. Good luck. All right. Here he goes. Whoa. Oh no. Far too Terry. short. That was rubbish. Actually. That, was, <laughs> that was rubbish. Right. Here we go. Oh, oh that was nice. Just in good. the circle. Just I've missed the port. I've got to do port. something here now. Oh. 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 No. Nice. Here we go. Yo. So I mean, they're, you must they're be worried now. No. Okay. All right. Oh! oh I thought that was a pork hit. I thought you were going to split it. It was a pork <laughs> hit. Come on, Terry. Oh, oh, too short. Too short. Oh no. But <laughs> it's, very it's good. It is genuinely good fun. That actually. is very, I mean, very I can, good fun. I can see why they took off, and it is a shame that they're just so darn dangerous. <laughs> or are they? I don't know. Rather unfortunately, neither of us managed to hit the pork during that. I thought I had. I thought I got a pork hit, but I didn't. So what I'm going to do now is just drop it from a metre up. So the point is a metre above the pork now. And it will just give you an idea what a casual throw, a casual impact from this thing will do. And then we'll do the same with the lawn darts. Oh, that is nasty. Terry, so up a little bit, Terry. Okay, then Terry, drop that one, see what we got. <laughs> so, on the, on the surface, on the surface, quite clearly, <coughs> ooh, that much into the pork and no much into your pork. So, little Sophie is going to be safe off this one. But what happens when we throw for distance? That's when you're really hurling them. So we'll go down to the sunken garden where we've got a good length and we'll throw them there. Let's do that. We've just arrived in the walled garden at Kentwell here and it's occurred to us, none of us have actually read the rules off the back. So uh, Jonathan, could you take it away? Certainly. Rules are for English lawn darts. How to play. Stand one at a time inside a target ring and toss dart towards the other target ring, throwing underarm. And the scoring, yeah, yeah. the object is to be the first person or team to score 21 points. Score three points for each dart embedded in your opponent. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh, inside the target area. And one point for the next nearest dart in each round. Right. Right. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. Fine. So, what we're going to do then, Terry, up the other end. Oh, can I have two darts? Because this is not a job for Plumbata. Uh, I am not going to stand in the ring. And Terry, take it away. But I mean, let's face it, many children will be standing a lot closer than this. Uh, right, uh, out the ring. <laughs> oh, oh, but we're going to do distance after this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. But 
I think what is completely clear is there's plenty of scope for children to, well, get in the way, really. It's guaranteed to happen. And one of the things I like to do when I'm messing around with stuff is I make new discoveries. And we just set up for the next bit of filming where we're going to have a game of lawn darts. And Terry, by complete accident, <laughs> fluffed up the throw completely. And he just did that and it went straight up in the air and landed about a metre from him. And that's something, of course, that children are going to do all the time. And the other thing that they're going to do, because they're not the most coordinated people in the world, they're going to go for the backswing and they're going to let go. And that is what is going to happen. We're going to throw for distance now. And as I was saying earlier, these were used by skirmishers. So they had to get 40, 50 metres out, something like that. I'm not that practised. So that's the absolute cream of native troops, really. And then, of course, we have Terry here, which is the absolute cream of 1970s campers. Thank so you. we're going to have a distance competition now. How far can I throw these? And how far can Terry throw his? Here we go. Oh. oh, nice little spin on that. I don't know if you saw that, actually. It's quite nice. Oh, I'll go to the next one. Are you gonna yeah, 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 no, yeah, go, go, go. Oh, try, and tell you what, can you try one overhand, see if you get any more distance? Here we go. Whoa. Oh, not quite as far. I think under. Oh, Whoa. nice. Oh, thank nice. you. Thank you very much. Let's just leave it there. So, plumbata. Here we go. Whoa! I do find standing in the ring a bit. <laughs> do, you, do you reckon Roman auxiliaries stepped out the ring? Because I think they probably did. Actually. Oh, that's what, not fair. What I'm also going to do is go overhand. All right. Oh, mind that squirrel. Whoa! So, I mean, the, the difference... Oh, that was a rubbish one. The difference is really significant. I'm going to estimate and say about 45 metres, something like that, 45 yards. So quite a difference in distance. The lawn darts are interesting and they're not going in that deeply, uh, but they certainly, you know, they're going to hurt little Sophie or whoever. So we're just coming out to the furthest of our throws now. And if we have a look at this, I mean, I did give it everything, but you know, I'm not practised at it. But look how deeply it's gone in. So all the way up to the head there. Which is that far. So they really are monumentally nasty things. And I think at the moment we can say that lawn darts definitely are going to be dangerous, but they're not remotely like these. So we've had a few games now for accuracy and distance with both the lawn darts and the plumbata. Now these were quite clearly made for war and are horrifically dangerous things. And yet these also led to thousands of accidents. And that's why in the end they got banned in America particularly. Um, they're still available in Europe, but in a modified form. But in, on the second hand market, we can still buy them as they were. That's not a problem. But the thing is, none of this has factored in little boys like me. And that was the adolescent, the, the sort of child you didn't want to live next door to. And I was one of them. And so the first thing that I would have done with these was gone and sharpened them. So we're just going to run a test now where we sharpen these up and we'll have a look and see how much nastier they are. What I mean by the adolescent factor is people are going to be sharpening these up they are going to be throwing them up in the air and dodging or trying to catch them and stuff like that because that's how stupid kids can be. You know, all of you out there have been kids or you've got kids, you know this is true. So first up, we're going to do the blunt blue ones at a log on the ground there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's good enough. Red oh. one's going in. Oh. <laughs> and, <there's... laughs> and I think that answers a lot of the questions. And I think this says everything that we need to know about lawn darts and why they were banned, why they were dangerous. The blue ones, the blunt ones, they still stuck into the end of this wood here. Not so deeply, obviously. But the red ones, which some maniac adolescent sharpened up, not me, obviously, these ones are right on in there. And they actually take some getting out. So it would have happened, it would have been done. I certainly wouldn't would have done it if I had a set of these when I was a kid. That, so before I hand these back to the 70s campers, I've done the responsible thing and blunted them back off. 
Well, I think that's everything we really need to know about Plumbata versus Lawn Dart, Jarts. Quite clearly the most dangerous game that came out of the 1970s. So I think we're done now. So thank you very much, Jeremy. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And uh, Terry. Yeah. Uh, one more game. What a great idea. Good. Ready? One, two, three. What I was hoping would happen is that one or the other of us had got it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Ladies out. Oh. <laughs> Watch out, they're sharp. <laughs> oh yeah, so they are. <laughs>